Zack returned holding a big brown book that looked half moldy with age. Look at what Mr. Clayton gave me, he said, and honestly you would have thought it was a six-pound baby he'd birthed by the proud look of him. He turned it over so I could read the binding. South Carolina Legal Reports, 1889. Zack rubbed his hand across the front, and little flecks of it fell off onto the floor. I'm starting my law library. That's nice, I said. Mr. Forrest stepped closer, staring at me with such intensity I thought I might need to wipe my nose. Zach says you're from Spartanburg County, that your parents both died? Yes, sir. One thing I didn't want was to get on the witness stand right here in his office and have him fire lawyer questions at me. An hour from now, Rosaline and I could be packing for prison. What brings you? I really do need to get back. I put my hand low on my stomach. I'm having a little feminine trouble. I tried to look very female and mysterious, slightly troubled by internal things they could not imagine and did not want to. It had been my experience for nearly a year that uttering, uttering the words female trouble could get me into places I wanted to go and out of places I didn't. Oh, said Zach. Well, let's go. Nice to meet you, Mr. Forrest, I said, clutching my abdomen, a small wince, walking slowly to the door. Believe me, Lily, he said, calling after me. The pleasure was all mine. Have you ever written a letter that you knew you could never mail, but you needed to write it anyway? Back in the room at the Honey House, I wrote a letter to T-Ray during which I broke the points of three pencils and the words, well, they looked like they'd been laid on paper with branding irons. Dear T-Ray, I'm sick to death of you telling, yelling at me. I am not deaf. I am only stupid for calling you up. If you were being tortured by Martians and the only thing that could save you was telling them my favorite color, you would die on the spot. What was I thinking? All I had to do was remember the Father's Day card I made for you when I was nine and still hoping for love. Do you remember it? Well, of course you don't. I do because I nearly killed myself working on it. I never told you I was up half the night with a dictionary looking up words to go with letters in Daddy. I got the idea, not that you're interested, from Mrs. Poole, who had us do it in Sunday school with the word joy, J, Jesus, O, others, Y, yourself. This is the correct order of life, she said, and if you follow it, you will have joy, joy, joy. Well, I tried that putting myself last, left, and right, and I am still waiting for Joy to show up. So the exercise was good for nothing except for giving me the idea for your card. I thought if I spelled out the meaning of Daddy to you, it would help you along. I was trying to say, here, try these things. I will so appreciate it. I use the words like delightful, determined to be kind. I expected to get it propped on your dresser, and the next day I find it on the telephone table where you've peeled a peach on top of it, and the skin and pit are stuck to the paper. I have always wanted to say that, say to you that was despicable. D, despicable. A, angry. D, dud of a father. D, disappointment. Y, yoke around my neck. Writing this is not the Jesus, others, yourself philosophy of life, but it does bring me J-O-Y to finally say these things to your face. Love, Lily. P.S. I do not for one half second believe my mother left me. I read the letter back then tore it into tiny pieces. I felt relief to get all of that out of my system, but I had lied about it bringing me joy. I almost wanted to write another letter that I would not send and say I'm sorry. That night, when the pink house was sound asleep, I came creeping in, needing the bathroom. I never worried about finding my way through the house, as August left a trail of night lights on from the kitchen to the bathroom. I had come barefoot, collecting dew on my, the soles of my feet. Sitting on the toilet, trying to pee very quietly, I could see crepe myrtle petals stuck to my toes. Over my head, Rosaline's snores sifted through the ceiling. It is always a relief to empty your bladder. Better than sex, that's what Rosaline said. As good as it felt, though, I sincerely hoped she was wrong. I headed toward the kitchen, but then something made me turn around. Your guess is as good as mine. I walked in the opposite direction to the parlor, 
Stepping inside, I heard a sigh so deep and satisfying that for a moment I didn't realize it had come from my own lungs. The candle in the red glass beside the Mary statue still burned, looking like a tiny red heart in a cave of darkness, pulsing out light to the world. August kept it going night and day. It reminded me of the eternal flame they put on John F. Kennedy's grave that will never go out no matter what. Our Lady of Chains looked so different late at night, her face older and darker, her fist bigger than I remembered. I wondered about all the places she traveled out there on the waters of the world, all the sad things that had been whispered to her, the things she'd endured. Sometimes after we'd done our prayers with the beads, I could not remember how to cross myself right, getting it mixed up like you would expect any Baptist-raised person to do. Whenever that happened, I just put my hand over my heart like we did in school for the Pledge of Allegiance. I felt one was as good as another, and that's what happened now. My hand just went automatically to my heart and stayed there. I told her, fix me. Please fix me. Help me know what to do. Forgive me. Is my mother all right up there with God? Don't let them find us. If they find us, don't let them take me back. If they find us, keep Rosaline from being killed. Let June love me. Let T. Ray love me. Help me stop lying. Make the world better. Take the meanness out of people's hearts. I moved closer so now I could see the heart on her chest. In my mind, I heard the bees fanning their wings down in the dark music box. I saw August and me with our ears right to the hive. I remembered her voice the first time she told me our story of Lady of Chains. Send them rescue, send them consolation, send them freedom. I reached out and traced Black Mary's heart with my fingers. I stood with the petals on my toes and pressed my palm flat and hard against her heart. I live in a hive of darkness and you are my mother, I told her. You are the mother of thousands.